everybody, what's up? It's Joel, AKA The Daily Guru, and it's time for a new segment that I simply call Ask The Guru. So I went out on Tumblr and on Facebook and on Twitter. You can find me right there if you want. And I said, hey, ask me a music related question. A lot of people responded, so I'm gonna answer a couple of them right now. The first question comes from Jello Morrison from Tumblr, and he asked me, if you could jam with any musician or lyricist, who would it be and why? On the living musician side of things, that one's really easy. It's Tom Waits. The guy sees music, makes music, and hears music like nobody else. His creativity has absolutely no bounds, and he seems to never be satisfied with making the same sound twice. And come on, at the end of the day, it's Tom freaking Waits. Who doesn't want to hang out with that guy? Now, on the dead musician side of things, it's also a real easy choice for me. It's absolutely Joe Strummer from The Clash. In his early years, there's no question that he was the soul of the punk rock movement. He really gave it a purpose, and his lyrics, and just his his voice from that era had this intensity that's like nothing else in music history. But really for me, the Joe Strummer I really love is when he gets into his later years and he's finding different ways to express that anger, that frustration, and yet there's still that power and that presence in his voice, but he has this whole new control over it. And I'll admit it, Joe Strummer is my personal hero. Enough said. All right, question number two comes from Brown Coat by Night, and he asks, greatest hits albums, yay or nay? Actually, to tell you the truth, I have a very strong opinion on Greatest Hits albums, and that opinion is that they suck. But there's a caveat to that. Greatest Hits albums suck for any artist that recorded after 1960. The fact of the matter is, before that year, so many artists were doing one-off sessions here and there and who knows where, that compilations and Greatest Hits albums are often the only way to get a bulk of that artist's material in any easy way. But musical preference aside, artists like Aerosmith or The Eagles or James Brown have absolutely no business putting out Greatest Hits records. Since Greatest Hits albums kind of handpick certain tracks, it's a jumbled mess chronologically, sonically, and they're just not good. They just sound so disjointed and that's because greatest hits albums are rarely anything more than a label or an artist being a greedy cash cow and wanting more of your money. All right, question number three comes from Leave It Running and he asked me, how do you feel about the full boost production style and what it's done to the current music industry? Now, for those of you who are sitting there saying, I have no idea what that question is, allow me to explain. Over the past few years, in almost every single genre, there's been this new trend where when they're in the mixing and mastering stage of recording, at the end of it, they just kind of push all the levels as high as they can go without adding any distortion to the sound. Personally, I think it's pretty lame and I think the music suffers for it. If you ask me, it's actually a direct effect of the curse of the white headphones. Whether you want to call them iPad pod earbuds or Beats by Dre, the music that comes through those is absolutely horrid. And that's not an opinion, that's fact. Add in the quality of an MP3, why bother even listening? For me, it's the subtleties, it's that diversity in volume, it's having that space between the instruments that can make a track so amazing. And when you go to a full boost production style, it completely ruins that aspect of the music. And this is also where the art of being a recording engineer came into play. That's why people like Paul Rothschild and Phil Spector are absolute legends, you're just never gonna get that again. So in my opinion, Sonic Boost is just another manifestation of the lazy contentment with mediocrity that the music industry has fallen in love with. It's poisoning the music industry and I for one am not a fan. So if you guys want to ask me a question for next time, you can email me at thedailyguru at gmail.com or you can find me on any of these websites below and I'll be more than happy to answer any of your questions. So that's the questions I got for you guys today. I, we have one more question. Why is Neil Finn the greatest pop songwriter in history? Neil Finn, Neil Finn. The dude from Crowded House? That's easy, he's not. There's no arguing there. Without question, the greatest pop songwriter in all of music history has to be 